We've already seen a clip of Herc Chang to Javi Aguirre. A number of interviews he's done uh, over on YouTube. <laughs> Be sure to check them out, including with my next guest, Demarcus Beasley joins us. Demarcus, thank you very much for your time. Of course, kind of no recently problem. retired. Do you feel good about that now, considering what it must be like being a player, trying to keep yourself motivated, keep fit, without really a deadline as to when soccer is going to come back? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about coming out of retirement now. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, um, that part is, is, is you know, it's is, is okay. You know, I don't – retirement is – is not all that it's cracked up to be, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far. In what way? What What do you miss? Uh, I mean, just I mean, I, everyone can tell you the same kind of answers. Uh, you miss the camaraderie with the boys, the locker room. Obviously, the most important, the games. You know, uh, the games under the lights at night. You know, uh, the games that really mean something. You know, playing for championships. Um, those those kind of games, you know, you miss. Um, obviously, it's, you know, some of the friendlies, I don't, <laughs> I don't really miss those. But uh, definitely don't <laughs> miss preseason. Don't miss that. Uh, don't don't I don't miss running around the field for no reason. Just trying to get <laughs> trying to get fit, especially in my old age. But uh, but yeah, definitely my teammates, the the jokes, uh, you know, the road trips, those are fun. Now, of course, when soccer comes back, it will be different almost inevitably. It's going to be behind closed doors uh, to start with. Have you ever played in a game like that? I imagine it's, it's a strange atmosphere for a player. Yeah, I was actually I was thinking about that. I don't think I ever have played behind uh, closed doors uh, in a big stadium. Obviously, when you're, you know, you're, when you're in the youth, you don't play in front of many, many people. But in a, in a whole stadium where there's no one, no, no, uh, no sound, no... No crowd noise, no singing. You know, all you hear is the coaches and you know basically the players on the field. So that'll be definitely interesting. Uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, you know. Well, speaking from an ex-player, I, I don't think you know too many players will enjoy you know playing in front of you know no fans because that's you know a lot of reason why we play. Um, so yeah, it'll be different. It'll be in interesting, you know, for 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 the players and. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you got to put that aside. And when they do come back to, you know, to playing football, soccer, then, um, you know, they, they got to do what they can to, to win the game. I wanted to go down memory lane with you. Not quite as intense as Herc was, I, I promise. Uh, <laughs> starting with your move cool. uh, to PSV. <laughs> Obviously, you, you, you kind of come into this situation. You're brought in uh, to replace Iron Robin, of all people. You're then part of a, of a title winning side. You get to the semifinals of the Champions League. That experience, the whole thing must have just been amazing. Yeah, it, it really it really was. And to be honest, I didn't actually know I was re replacing uh, Robin until I got <laughs> until I got to Holland. Um, obviously, there were, there might have been you know things written um, in in the, on the internet or in the paper, but you know I didn't I didn't read that, so I didn't know until I got to Holland and they were telling me. So yeah, you know, how does it feel to you know be taking you know Robin's number? Uh, his place and I'm like excuse me <laughs> so those are the shoes that I have to feel now that's what people are expecting me to do so uh but no I mean you know obviously he was a he's a he's a he was a great player but, but uh yeah you know I just tried to um uh play my game and and obviously do the things that um uh goose hitting uh you know saw in me and and try to help the team win you know the first and foremost thing when you go to Europe is you got to earn respect and you know, not not just from your, uh, not just from your fans. I mean, from your teammates and from the coaches. You got to earn respect of a reason of why they bought a foreign player, you know, to your country. So you got to earn that respect every day through training. You know how you conduct yourself, and you know, um, I felt I did that. Meanwhile, looking at Manchester City, if I would have told you when you were there that in ten years' time they would be the powerhouse in soccer that they are, what would you have said to me? I would have said, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. You know, and, and the funny thing is, I think it was the year after I left is that's when uh, the new ownership came in and, you know, they basically bought Man City and, you know, that's when everything changed. So if I would have stayed, you know, one more seat, I don't I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure I probably would have been sold after that. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, it was a year after I left. And that's when uh, the new ownership came in. And that's when, you know, they poured all that money into into city but no i i definitely couldn't fathom uh you know 
uh, Man City being being this big of a powerhouse, you know, uh, in my playing days with City. But uh, you know, I, I still you know followed him through and through. Um, I still have a you know a couple of contacts there that I speak to. So um, yeah, I'm, ho- I'm hoping to get there you know uh, one day you know in the near future to see the whole the new facility and go to a game and this and that. So, uh, but mm-hmm. I am looking forward to uh, going to Man City again, visiting. Now, of course, when the, when the Champions League comes back, they're sitting in a nice position, of course, for the lead over Real Madrid going into the second leg, which is in Manchester. Do you think they can mm-hmm. do it this time? Do you think they can win the whole tournament? I, I think so. Uh, I, I really do, you know, and I, I obviously they've had, a, you know, different, um, you know, injury problems, uh, especially in, in with the back line. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, defensive midfielders having to step in and, and play at, at the centre back position. But uh, but no, I think they have enough weapons. You know, if they can get past Real Madrid, um, I think they have a good shot of, of, of mm. going all the way and, and you know, uh, winning it all. You know, obviously, you know, a little bit of luck um, is always needed in those type of tournaments. But, you know, I think their quality that they have from each player and the players that come in, you know, off the bench, you know, to, to, help, the, to help to, you know, give everyone a, a push. Uh, I think they have enough uh, in their in their locker room and their – in the dressing room to uh, to win the Champions League this year, if it comes back, obviously. Also challenge them inevitably. Well, yeah, yeah won't it? In, sure. the, in the Champions League is, is Bayern Munich. Uh, we, had, we had Alfonso Davies uh, with us last week, and it is incredible the impact that he's made in Germany in such a short space of time. And what I wanted to talk mm-hmm. to you about as a player. How difficult is it to do what he has done, basically from an attacking midfielder now to a fullback? Yeah, you know what? You know what? I, I I think about that, and the reason why I think you know he's you know obviously miles you know ahead of me because of uh, you know we kind of had the same situation. I was an attacker and then moved back to left back, but I did it towards the end of my career. You know, he's doing it when he's I think he's 19, 18, 19 years old, and obviously for Bayern mm-hmm. Munich. For me, I think the biggest part is mentality. You know, because you go from you know creating goals, trying to, you know, win games, trying to, you know, um, sometimes even, you know, put the game, put the, the team on your back to, you know, to, to make something happen. That's, that's your job is to score goals and, and to be creative and, and, and make assists. And now it's about, you know, not so much going forward and being defensive. That's your, you know, your first priority is, is basically getting to zero and getting a clean sheet. That's your, that's your reward as a defender. You know, so him being able to change that mentality at such a young age is, is uh, it just goes to show how how mentally strong he is. You know, at this at this age, and obviously, you know, playing in in Germany in the Bundesliga, playing for you know the powerhouse, which is you know Bayern Munich, you know that that shouldn't go um, underappreciated. You know, yes, he's a good, he's a very good player. Um, he has a, all the you know the attributes to to be a, a top you know player in in the whole world, not just you know in our in our region. Uh, but th- for for him to be able to you know change that that chip you know in his in his head at such a young age at a big club um, is, uh, is 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 pretty impressive. Uh, final question for you, Demarcus. Oh, it's real tough journalistic stuff. I had to dig deep to find this within <laughs> all my years of of working here on TV. Uh, who is the hardest opponent that you've ever come up against? Which player? Ooh. The hardest player I've ever had to go up against. I would say, I'll, I'll give you two answers. The hardest player I think I've ever had to go up against would be Ashley Cole. I think he was, this is back um, when I was obviously play, <laughs> playing, not when, not in the Houston, Houston Dynamo days against the LA Galaxy days, not, not, the, no, not those days. But when I was in Europe in the Champions League playing against him, um, I think he was probably the the hardest guy to get around um, in my days, and the smartest player I would say hands down is is Maldini, Pablo Maldini. Um, uh, I played against him a couple of times, obviously uh, with PSV against uh, AC Milan, and as far as a defender, he was, you know, he was towards the end of his career when I when I was playing against him, and by far, you know, miles ahead of me. Um, as far as understanding the game and and you know just being smarter 
and more intelligent than I was at such a young age. So yeah, those 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 two would be my my answers. Ashley Cole would, would be the hardest, and smartest was uh, Maldini. <sighs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.